All right. Um, uh, are we live yet? Alrighty, so uh, I'm hoping you guys can hear me. Uh, all right, um, you guys hear can hear me, right? Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. So uh, I hope you guys can hear me. But uh, welcome to another live stream. And uh, today we are going to be attempting to repair this beautiful Macintosh 2 that I bought off of eBay uh, not too long ago. So this is just going to be like a short uh, soldering job and a few other things uh, if needed. Um, this thing was bought broken and I have a suspicion on what the issue can be. And parts of this stream will be clips for the upcoming repair video that should be coming out in, a, in maybe one or two weeks. Uh, anyway, so continuing. So, uh, as I said before, this isn't working, and I will be doing my best to repair it. So, let's get started. So, the first thing we're going to do is, uh, uh, oh yeah, so I wanted to mention that you guys can ask me questions, and we can, like, talk about topics and stuff. So, if you have anything you would want to want to say, uh, let me know in the chat, and I will uh, take a look at it. I have to quickly pull up the stream on this other computer I have over here to the uh, left of me, um, so I can easily see the chat, because the thing I am uh, streaming on is behind me while I'm doing this, so I won't be able to see the chat. So let me just quickly uh, pull this up over here, and uh, we should see. So... Uh, and we seem to have seven viewers at the moment, which is very nice. Um, I'm going to have to turn the volume down all the way. Just so that we can uh, yes, I am excited about the uh, other stream tomorrow. Very excited, in fact. Uh, I've been wanting to be part of uh, MacYak for a bit of time, and I'm excited that it's finally happening, so I can't wait. And I've kind of been uh, uh, thinking about it a lot, so it's pretty exciting. But... Uh, for now, we're just going to be doing this stream, which is the Mac 2, and uh, yeah, we'll just get uh, get this started. All right, so some backstory. I bought this on eBay, as I said before, and the seller described it as not working. So the thing is that um, I did try to turn this on, and it does not work. So the thing is that these have a very common issue. So Mac 2s are known for a couple issues, but one of the biggest issues is that it uses it actually uses two PRAM batteries on the inside. And why it does is the is what I will explain right now. So the Mac 2 has two PRAM batteries, and normally one PRAM battery would be um, controlling the clock settings, mouse settings, other things like that, and while the computer's unplugged. But then there's another one. So what does the other one do? The other one um, helps the computer start up. So it might seem weird, but this battery is actually used for the startup. It's a lot like a car battery. The, a car cannot start up without the electrical charge of a battery. And that's basically the same with this. It's like a car. It doesn't work without the battery. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be replacing these batteries. So annoyingly, these batteries are soldered in, as you can see here. So I had to cut them out before they started leaking. But uh, I already bought some replacements over here. These are what I'm going to be replacing them with. They're just regular, new, brand new PRAM batteries with their uh, little holders so that I can easily replace them in the future. But I'm hoping that this is going to be the only problem. So what we're going to be doing in the stream today is we're going to take this apart. Uh, we're going to take out the main board, and then we're going to do the soldering. And then once we do that, uh, we're going to put it back together and then see if it works. And if it doesn't work, we're going to do some further troubleshooting. And I might have to finish fixing it in another stream or in that upcoming uh, repair video. Anyway, let's get started. So the way you take apart the Mac 2 is that there's these two tabs on the back. And you want to push down on them and then you just pull up a bit. And you don't want to pull up too far. It will eventually come out like this. You don't want to pull too far, but you want to pull just far enough where you can uh, kind of pull it back a bit. You just hit it like this. And then it should come up because you don't want to break the uh, plastic tabs on the front. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, it's out. And uh, we have Duke telling us, yay buffering. 
Oh, that's always a good thing. Uh, on my screen to the left of me, it doesn't seem to be buffering. Uh, it might be just you, but I'm hoping that it's not me. But uh, let me know if there's any further uh, connection issues. And I'm also sorry about the stream quality and other stuff like that. Uh, I'm um, I'm not. I'm not at a, a thousand subs yet, so I can't use better equipment for my uh, streams. So this is the best I have at the moment. So anyway, moving on. All right, so you're in the Mac 2, and there's supposed to be like a, a whole assembly top with like the hard drive, the floppy drives and stuff. I've already taken that out because I've been in here before. It also had two video cards over here. So um, yeah, but if you look up closely over here, this is where the two PRAM batteries were. Um, before I took it apart. And I cut them out, obviously, because I don't want them to leak, like Steve's uh, Quadra from that live stream. Uh, chat's unusually quiet, but um, anyway, uh, continuing. So, yeah, I don't want these two batteries to leak, so I already uh, cut them out. So, after that, uh, all you have to do is you have to uh, remove a couple screws on the board, um, I'm pretty sure it's only two screws because that's all I can see. There's a screw there and a screw there. So I think I'm just going to take them out. So this uses a uh, Phillips screw. And apparently this was actually one of Apple's uh, first uh, modular Macs. A revision A board, no surface mount electrolytic caps, hooray. Yep, pretty neat. This is one of the very first Mac 2s and ever made, which is really nice. So recapping this is supposed is going to be really easy. Because surface mount caps didn't exist. Well, I mean, they did exist, but they didn't put it in this, thankfully. So that's nice. Um, yeah, but anyway, there seem to just be two screws on the inside. So we're just going to remove those first. This is one of Apple, as I was saying, this is one of Apple's uh, very first modular Macs that are very easy to take apart. So um, that's very, very thankful for that. And then this computer actually went on to, to be, to evolve into like other Macs, like the, uh, 2CX, 2CI, which are smaller form factor. They even had um, better versions of this case case style, and then like the 2X and 2FX. And the 2FX is actually probably one of the most expensive Apple computers ever made, uh, right behind the uh, new Mac Pro, which is pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, anyway, there's also a speaker cable in here that we'll have to remove, and the power supply cable, which we just uh, have to pull out. We'll do that right now. And now, I'm pretty sure all you have to do is just like pull it back or just out of the case. Or no, there's a couple tabs you have to like pull on, a lot like the Macintosh LC. So I think I'm going to do that now. So, uh, uh, there was an Apple Lisa at 10K. Yeah, I know, there was, but the Macintosh 2 FX originally. Costed around like twelve to thirteen thousand dollars at the base model, or no, no, it was like nine thousand back then, and it's like twelve thousand today, which is really expensive, more than the Lisa actually, um, which is pretty crazy if you think about it. I mean, the Lisa failed because of its price and stuff, and it wasn't very a very good computer. But this um, two FX wasn't that bad and didn't do that bad in sales. I mean, compared to the Lisa, the Lisa was terrible. So, uh, that's interesting, but, uh, yeah, I hope you all are enjoying the stream so far. I'm sorry about the quality, as I said before, not very good. If I had a thousand subscribers, I'd use better filming equipment, but I can't, so I have to use, um, the works because I'm not capable of that. I mean, I am, it's just, uh, they don't let you stream with, like, mobile devices and stuff, so, uh, unless you have 10,000. But anyway, uh, we almost have the board out. Uh, and yep, there it is. That's the board. Very dusty, which is pretty lovely. And it's also huge. It's massive. It has, um, it has a lot of big components on it. A lot of, a lot of RAM and RAM chips and stuff. So pretty nice. And then on the back, you can see all the, uh, IO this thing's got. Uh, this is just pretty standard Mac IO from back in the day. You got your printer ports, modem, whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, left in the case, we have the speaker and the power supply. We're going to put this to the side because we're not going to deal with this at the moment. We're just going to look at the board for now. But I'm going to adjust the camera in just a moment. Let's take like, this down. And I noticed the chat's a bit quiet. So you get, if you guys want, you can ask me questions and uh, 
uh, inquire about certain things and uh, say other stuff. It might just be my connection. I mean, I have like a router, uh, a router booster over here that's supposed to like boost the signal. I'm not sure if it's doing anything, but, but uh, yeah, eat buffering a shit ton. Oh, lovely. Ah, uh, oh yeah, now I see on my computer. Uh, yeah, I see now. Oh God. Uh, as you mentioned, the router booster uh, buffered for me. Oh, God, another Wi-Fi stream or wall. I mean, there's a frick. Mm. Uh, Dell doesn't have Ethernet on, uh, Now, Oh, is it working? Oh, hold on. Let me just turn this off, I guess. Shut that down. Uh, okay, I guess I'll just continue like this. Uh, I had like three people like leave, which is unfortunate. Um... Oh, okay, I guess it's all fine now. I had to turn off, like, three computers just to get this working finally, but, uh, well, at least it is working. So, I guess we will just continue where we left off. 
So, as I was saying, um, at the moment, I guess we're just going to have to uh, focus on the uh, main board. Um, but, yeah, as I was saying, so what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be resoldering these uh, PRAM battery, P -ROM batteries and their holders. So, uh, yeah, that's what we're going to do. So, taking a quick look at the board, um, as Bruce mentioned before, this is an earlier board. This is one of the earliest ones, so it has, like, all the uh, uh, the non-surface mount caps, which is very nice, so that recapping this in the future will be very easy. Um, uh, a few other things. Uh, it has, like, uh, there's a lot of new bus slots. I'm pretty sure it's, like, I can't even think to it. It's, like, six new bus slots. Um, you've also got the random, I mean, the standard array of ports on the back. Uh, and then also you're probably wondering what this is. Uh, some people tell me that this was for uh, testing the boards when they were in production. And I'm, I'm not sure if there's any way to actually use that nowadays, but it's not connected to anything, but it's just an interesting thing to note. But uh, yeah, anyway, as I said before, you guys can ask me questions and uh, let me know what's what the stream status is. Uh, does it have the super drive ROM upgrade? Well, actually, um, it did come with this monstrous uh, 40 megabyte, <laughs> this 40 megabyte monster. This is like, I don't know, like five inches. And if you compare it to like a normal, uh, regular drive that you'd see in everything, yeah, this thing's massive. And this is obviously an earlier model because later models had the, uh, regular smaller drives this thing's huge colossal thing this is like yeah yeah it's definitely a thick boy i'm hoping this is this is fully working because that'd be hilarious to be able to use and stuff and, I, and it also has this really cool label on it and i just like it so i'm hoping it works but uh anyway uh you guys can also yeah so you can keep asking me questions if you want bruce um but otherwise we're going to get to started with the uh with the uh, soldering. So I have a soldering iron here. This is uh, uh, probably the cheapest of the cheap. Um, this is uh, just a, probably the most basic thing you've probably ever seen. It, you have a, it's just, it gets hot and you plug it in. That's literally all it is and it works. Uh, it's big in both size and storage for the time. That is correct, actually. So, I mean, even if it doesn't seem like much today, it was a lot back in the day. And uh, there are going to be, I want to mention, there are going to be some inconvenience with the stream. For example, now, uh, I'm actually in a boiler room and these air conditioner machines like to turn on and stuff. So, very irritating, but uh, we'll get this done. So, anyway, uh, we're going to have to plug this in somewhere. And I like, I have this special piece of wood that I like to use for uh, soldering. And, uh, I mean, wood near hot things is never a good thing, but... I do it anyway, because who cares? But um, anyway, so we're actually going to get to the soldering now. So you're also going to want some uh, solder wick to remove the uh, uh, the uh, the old solder. You also want to have uh, some tweezers to pull out the little components that I have here. And uh, I've got another thing. Uh, buffering. God damn it. Uh, yeah, great. I can never keep up the name straight. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to make some space when I can comfortably do this. So, oh, this is wrong. It's adjusting the camera. Oh, yeah, that should be good. Uh, anyway. Oops. Yeah, so... I'm gonna over here. Sorry about the inconvenience, people. Uh, we should uh, get back to this in a moment. And, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, yeah, I'm going to plug this in for a second. I'm going to plug this in. I'm just going to start getting hot. I don't want to burn myself. Uh, unplug the TV. I don't think it works. Uh -oh, that was a computer. Um, let's unplug, uh, yeah, there we go. Uh, so yeah, that should be heating up pretty soon. Um, uh, yeah. Yep. 
All righty. Uh, refer them as size. You should invest in a G4 cube. Huh. I mean, funny you say that. I'm hoping that maybe I can get a cube at some point in my life. I mean, my dad used to have a cube because he was a fan of the of the weird or uh, innovative computers that Apple used to make. And he used to have a cube. He also had an MMD. He uh, also had a he had a bunch of really cool Apple computers. I don't know what happened to them. We definitely don't have them anymore, which is sad. I'm pretty sure he donated them to like a charity or something. I mean, I guess that's good, but uh, what good is that going to do now? Things got like maybe 800 megahertz processor or something, and they weren't even that good to be honest back in the day. But they were innovative, which is pretty cool, and that's exactly what my dad likes. But anyway, let me get the uh, solder. Here. For the uh, over there. And uh, as oh cool. And as I said before, um, I am going to be filming this so for the for YouTube. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna have this camera over here to the side, but you probably can't even see it that well. So. Yeah, anyway. Hope that's fully zoomed in. Oh, that is. Okay. Uh, yeah, Grudy, the one, 1. 1.44 floppies, but there was ROM upgrade to allow us to use. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, this one does actually have an up. I think, yeah, this one does have a white sticker. Uh, I tested the drives earlier in another computer, and they are, in fact, uh, 1.4. I think they're 1.44 megabyte drives. Uh, I tested them with an 800K after dark disk, but I'll try them out later. Um, this might be an upgraded model, but I found a lot of stock components on this. Uh, for example, the hard drive stock. The drives might be stock, too. Uh, is that a credit card machine? No, this is actually a label printer. I get asked this a lot. This is just for printing labels. So, yeah. But anyway, uh, we can see see the sticker, Charlie. Well, yeah. Okay. That's what I thought. Um, anyway, uh, the iron should be heating up now. I'm just trying to set up this camera over here for the YouTube video that I'm making on this. So, uh, yeah. Okay, that's set up. Um, yeah, so that seems to be hot. Uh, I'm not sure if it's hot enough, but I'll do a quick test right now. Oh, it's a bit far from that. So. This is going to be a very awkward job, or maybe I can just move this chair over here. I don't know. I just. Uh, I'm just going to move the bench, I guess. It was a very disorganized stream. I apologize. Uh, not very well thought out. So I'm currently moving like 20 things. I'm just... Yeah, but anyway. Uh, we're going to actually get to the uh, uh, soldering now. Um, pardon me if I can't see any of the uh, chat replies. Uh, I could pull out my phone, but it's across the room and I don't feel like doing that now. But uh, anyway, we'll actually get to the soldering now. I can't see the computer, so uh, pardon me if I don't see your uh, replies. But I'm going to do a quick test to see if this is hot enough by melting just a bit of uh, solder on this uh, on this roll over here. So uh, let's see. And yep, yeah, seems to be hot enough. So we shall begin in a couple minutes. I mean, a couple moments. So yeah. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to remove the old legs from the old batteries. Now, they're still in there. I did a very bad job of removing them. I didn't just, I decided not to sol solder them beforehand. So, uh, yeah, so that's all ruined. But uh, I'm going to quickly start the camera over here, and, uh, and then we'll actually get to the uh, soldering. So, uh, camera started. And the camera is starting, so uh, we can now uh, safely get to this uh, activity. Alrighty, so uh, 
I'm not the best at soldering, but I'm good enough at doing a uh, decentish job. So what I'm going to start off with doing is I'm going to start off with uh, uh, but it start off with trying to remove these uh, legs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to heat up these solder and then try to pull them out with this these uh, uh, with these tweezers. So I'm going to heat this up. And soldering is very slow and it takes kind of a long time, especially if you have garbage equipment that I do. And things do get very hot, so you want to be careful that you don't um, uh, accidentally heat up something too much or just burn yourself in general. So uh, that's one thing to note. Uh, I think going to be heating up. That's not a good sign. I might. I think I might just do this on the other side, honestly. Yeah, it might be easier. I don't even think this is hot enough, is it? I mean, it, eh. it should be. I think I'll just flip over the board because there's more um, to heat up on the back. Um, knowledge is power. But uh, on the back, it's very easy to uh, see what is what. Um, you can see here these four um, prongs. They look different from the other ones. So I'm going to heat those up. And I think I'm just going to do the other method where you just uh, get the uh, solder wick out and you just uh, start removing it. Uh, no, no new uh, things in the chat. I hope it's not uh, buffering again, but uh, we'll see about that. So anyway, let's begin the removal process. Anyway. Oh yeah, it seems to be heating up. Excellent. Uh, we're just gonna put that on there. Like so and just wait for it to uh, get eaten up by the uh, solder wick. Uh, I think I'm actually gonna pull out my phone and see if I can get the chat up here so I can easily see it. Uh, Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, dinner time here. Good luck. All right, uh, Jay. I uh, hope to see you soon. Is Charlie a lefty? Excellent question. The answer is no. I am not a lefty. I'm just holding it like this because I'm sitting oddly. Uh, and also the outlets on the left of me. If it was on the right of me, I would be doing a lot better of a job. Right now, I have to deal with what I have now. So uh, I'm just going to heat this up now. Uh, no, a hefty wall. Yeah, it's just the, uh, uh, this, I mean, I, I mean, you probably can't hear me too well because the microphone on my computer's trash and there's a lot of background noise from the machines behind me, so, but, uh, I hope it's just clear enough to make out. And, oh, looks like we're getting somewhere. Uh, this seems to be coming loose. Um, hold on. I think that's out. Let me see if I can uh, poke that through. Hold on. I think that might be out. I think that leg on the end is bent, so it's not coming out properly. Ew, light mode YouTube. <laughs> yes, unfortunately, I can't do regular YouTube on my phone. Oh, damn it. Uh, unfortunately, I can't do regular YouTube on my phone, but uh, uh, I would if I could, but I can't, which is sad. I'll buff up. Mm. Okay. Yep, see if you can up again. And I think that's good. Uh, I think it went through the hole. Uh, yeah, frick, it's still in there. Let me just get it from here. Then. It seems to be easy clap. All right, there we go. And that's the first leg out. Uh, four, I mean, three more to go. I think I'll just do it from up here now that it's hot enough. 
just a wait a bit. Uh, how many views are we getting right now? Well, we have three watching. That's, oh, nope. That's been unfortunate. Um, I was hoping for a bit more, but I guess doing it on a Wednesday is a bit awkward. Usually Thursday is the best stream day, but uh, Mac Jack's doing it on the same day, so that would interfere, so I can't, but uh, maybe in a couple weeks or so. So, oh, it's a bit hard to keep the iron. Great. I think I'll just do what I did before and just try to push them all down and then get it. Yeah. Looks like the chat just completely died, like my Discord server. That is unfortunate. Uh, that Bruce left, and uh, Jay left for uh, dinner, and I bet greg is probably watching this in the background so mm. or maybe the stream is broken i don't know Uh, yeah, boy, Apple Prick is still here. Oh, that's nice. Uh, this is starting to get to me. The negative pins are often harder to get out than the positive because the ground plane on the board dissipates a lot and the heat at a lot for, of the heat of iron. Ah, oh, that's good to know. Uh, I'm probably doing the negative pins then, so I think I'll just start off with the positive pins then. Uh, that's a good thing to know. Thank you, Bruce. I have never thought of that or heard of that until you came up. Or maybe that's this side. I don't know. Or maybe my iron is just a piece of crap. Um. Yeah, this is kind of boring. I mean, it's not boring. It's just uneventful. It's hoping to get a bit more activity in the chat to answer questions and stuff. But uh, unfortunately, it doesn't seem to be happening. I never thought of that, Bruce. See, yeah, I mean, either, Greg. Uh, welcome to the club. I think I'm actually just going to put some uh, solder wick on this. See if I can uh, suck up that. And solder. Well, actually, here's a life hack that I learned by myself because of uh, all the stuff I've been doing. Uh, if you put the solder the solder iron sideways like so it heats up better i don't know why this is i think it's just covering more area uh yeah maybe time for new iron yeah i'd love to but they're kind of expensive looks like a cheap some cheap iron uh you are correct duke this is a cheap iron i found this at goodwill for like i don't know five dollars i didn't even know what it was and i bought it because i was desperate and i have no money i mean i have money but uh i don't know i don't know if i want to buy a new one yeah you don't want to use cheap used iron that is correct um yeah that might be an issue i think i'll just buy a new one at some point uh maybe one of those fancy ones that have like the little dials where you can adjust the temperature that'd be nice i mean i mean plugging it in seems like uh a new a cool thing enough oh look we have steve in the chat uh, the forty-eight dollar airflow station was the best investment I've made in my in recent history. Mm, I, I think I'll check it out. Uh, it sounds a bit pricey for my standards, but uh, I also have a cheap iron. Uh, you might want to you might kill someone something uh, iron. Uh, hello, Steve again. Uh, yeah, I might kill something. I hope I don't, but um, I'll actually get to that because uh, one thing you do want to note when you are soldering in batteries is that. The iron can actually, uh, I, I know this about like the rebuilding battery cells and stuff like that. Uh, I do know that um, uh, if you use a soldering iron, a, uh, uh, if, I, if you use a, uh, 
a uh, soldering, I mean, uh, if you use a soldering iron on uh, like battery cells and stuff and rebuilding a, a, a laptop battery, you can actually damage the uh, uh, battery cells and their capacity and stuff from the uh, heat of the soldering gun, I mean, soldering iron. So what you want to do is you want to make sure that you uh, avoid that. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to solder in the holders by themselves and then put the batteries in. And uh, I'm actually going to switch to my right hand now. To be easier, feel a much more powerful being doing this. The risk of breaking something with the old iron is real. That's likely the reason why my LC3 gave off on so many capacitor pads. So be careful. Uh, yes, I will, but I won't be replacing too many caps today. I'm just going to be replacing these uh, simple batteries. And oh, this one's loose. Uh, so we're just going to try and push that out now. Uh, yep, it's loose, definitely. And uh, yeah, that should be out. Uh, flipping it over, it is still stuck in like the last one. But Steve, all we're really doing here is we're just re-soldering uh, some new PRM batteries. This is an early Mac 2, and the early Mac 2s have soldered PRM batteries, which is a huge pain in the, in the arse. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to be replacing them with um, new batteries and new holders just to make it easier. So that's what I'm going to be doing here. And then once I do have the new batteries, and we are going to try and turn it on and see if it works. And... I'm going to see if I can have one of those it bonged moments like uh, like Greg's or yours. <laughs> uh, probably. Oh, damn it. I am an idiot. I am an idiot. I touched the leg right after taking it out and it was boiling hot. I didn't burn myself. It just hurts. Yeah, mine has that too. Just soldered on twin three AA battery holders. Yeah, I'd seen that before, but I want to do like a more professional thing i mean even though it means going the extra mile and price i mean this was a bit expensive this was like 15 dollars for the whole set of these things i mean even um i mean it's kind of expensive but i mean i want it more professional and more nice so uh yeah um that way i don't need to fuss with the seven to eight dollar two double a batteries yeah that's the thing i mean people do because it's cheaper i mean i want to do it because it's more professional i'm I'm the type of person, I'm like the 8-bit guy, I'm the, I'm kind of, I kind of have OCD when it comes to things like this, and I want things perfect, or I will, or everything will hurt. But anyway, moving on, uh, we're going to move on with the next two, the final two legs. It should come up pretty soon. Uh, save that money for a hot air station. Yeah, <laughs> that makes sense, but it's too late for that now. And it was like an extra eight dollars for shipping and stuff from DigiKey because they had to send it in this huge box. Like these two batteries came in this massive box that's like maybe the size of this uh, monitor over here. Um, but yeah, it was huge and it was totally unnecessary. But I guess it's like prevent them from like exploding and shipping and like damaging the precious uh, UPS trucks or some crap like that. So. Whatever. I mean, it's not like shipping companies have been that generous to me anyway. They've destroyed multiple things, especially FedEx. FedEx is the worst. I mean, I haven't had any real trouble with the other companies. It's mostly just FedEx. But uh, anyway, um, so you have a pretty good setup here. My phone's going to die in like a couple minutes. Well, not too, too many minutes, but just in some time. It's at 22%. I'm hoping it won't die, and I won't have to do that weird thing I've been doing so uh still not hot enough yet so we're just gonna leave it here uh ups usps destroyed my performa 58 cd uh that's actually a shame because my uh, mac tv which is like the same form factor and uh everything else uh it actually wasn't destroyed by USPS. They shipped it, and I remember seeing their tiny little mail truck, and then the woman just pulling out this monstrous box from the back. And you never see the USPS people bring a giant box out from the back of the truck. It's always like them just putting small stuff in a mailbox. Or the seller doesn't know how to package items. I mean, that could be true, too. I mean, I've had some sellers pack really poorly, like my Mac 2, or I've had sellers that have packed really well, like the Duo Dock and the Mac TV. The Mac TV was it was like perfectly, it was just perfectly uh, secured. And the Duo Dock was a very impressive packing job. Um, the seller did a very nice job with that. I almost didn't want to open it up past that, but I had to because I paid for it. And 
And he used like three uh, regular um, boxes to for the computer and stuff. And then he put it all in like a big box, some more bubble wrap. So, uh, yeah, but this seems to be heating up. And, oh, it's loose. It's loose. Well, we almost got it done. Uh, I'm put this over here. If I can get it out a bit more. Oh, uh, yeah, now I'll have to turn it around once again. The old ritual. Um. Needs to almost be done. Uh, if you're wondering what that noise is right now, that's actually the sound of the fans on my computer. This computer has very poor cooling. It has a small, tiny little fan. I mean, it's technically a tablet with Windows on it, and uh, the only reason why I'm using it is because it has a better camera than my main computer. Because it's, uh, it doesn't, have, it just doesn't have a good webcam. This has two cameras: a front and a rear-facing camera. So that's a lot better. It's more like a mobile. It has more like mobile device grade cameras rather than just a computer grade cameras, which is a bit nice. But they're also not very good anyway. We almost got this out. It's a bit more uh, persuasion. It should come out perfectly. Uh, let's hope this is the stream isn't buffering right now because the chat is once again very silent. Um, let me just readjust this in camera. Maybe that will do something. Uh, let me know if the stream's buffering or not, or just uh, say nothing if it is. Uh, what are your views on the death of Windows Seven? Windows Seven. Well, for one thing, uh, it's not illegal to pirate it anymore, which is kind of nice. So pirating isn't illegal, so I can do it more. I mean, that's... Uh, I think Duke feels the same. It's also a bit unfortunate that a classic-ish operating system is kind of dead now. But, I mean, everything has to... All good things must come to an end. Everything must die eventually. Um, no matter what it is. I mean, it could be anything. So, I mean... Uh, here's to the next uh, decade of Windows that isn't seven so yeah maybe i might do some windows seven things in the future i never plan on doing it. it's not that interesting i mean it's like the uh mac os 10.6 of windows of windows i mean it looks it looks the same they were came out in sort of the same time uh windows vista lol uh hmm, okay yeah windows vista was pretty bad or maybe it was something that i said that involved this i don't know i'm stupid um, yeah, it seems to be coming down soon. It's weird that it's not doing anything. I mean, it's wiggly, but I don't want to pull it out, so I risk breaking it. I'm just going to hold it like this, honestly. I don't want to touch the tips of my tweezers, because they're probably boiling from touching the uh, soldering iron tip. Um... Very bored. Oh. Mm. Uh, oh, that's still working. Oh. Yeah. Excellent. Uh, I forgot to say intensifies. Interesting. Uh, I dumb. Okay. Anyway, uh, I think it was just that I had the video calls on my phone or something. I don't know, but... Mmm, continuing. Uh, I just want to get this these stupid legs out. I don't feel like doing this anymore. I mean, I have to keep doing this to finish, but I don't feel like getting these legs out anymore. They're just a huge pain. Uh, yeah, this one... Yeah, I think Bruce was right about the positive and negative terminals, because the positive terminals are pretty easy to get. The negative terminals are a huge pain, so that's irritating. Um, yeah. Oh, and my camera stopped recording. Lovely, so that's been over 10 minutes. I have to get this leg out quickly. 
Come on, I want to get this out. I want to get this over with. I don't want to stop. I want to get, I want to keep. Oh, there we go. Finally. Listen. Uh, all right, finally, we have to do the last leg. And then once I am done with the last leg, I'll have to uh, redo my camera. Uh, yeah, the stream still seems to be going, thankfully. It's just you guys have been awfully quiet tonight. I guess it's not a really boring stream then. Oh, this is so much easier for some reason. It's just that it's hotter now. I should have waited then. This is what? That why was that so easy? What? That was the easiest one. Ugh, I guess this is hot now. I'm stupid. I should have just plugged this in like 20 minutes before we started this. But uh, anyway, what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to remove the uh, uh, the excess solder and then hopefully clear the holes. Uh, well, that just ruined that. So. But yeah, that's what you like. You want to do. You want to make sure that the uh, holes are clear, so that's easy to put the uh, new thing in the hole. So uh, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm just going to see if I can poke a hole like this. Okay, whatever. All right, moving on to the next thing. Oh, my legs hurt from sitting in that weird position. But anyway, so what we're going to be doing now is the moment you've all been waiting for. We're gonna put this stupid batteries in the in the computer so anyway uh, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take them out of their holders because as I said before I do not want these uh, batteries getting damaged from the sol solder guns heat so I will be removing them Ugh. damn it Ugh. okay that's out that's one and then time for the other one these things are kind of hard to take out. I think it's just because these uh, holders are new, so they haven't really been broken into yet. A lot like new shoes uh, take a while to uh, break into or break out of, I guess you could say. Uh, um, are you still going? I don't know if it is. Uh, yeah, it died. Lovely. Oh, no, wait, I think it didn't. I mm, think good. Uh, yep, that's what I thought, buffering. I am so sorry about this. I have a... I would use Ethernet, but the computer I'm on doesn't have Ethernet. And the computer that I have that does have Ethernet, which is like 10 times better than the computer I am using, uh, has a really crappy webcam compared to this one. So I couldn't use... I can possibly use that one. And I really want to buy like an, a nice external webcam I can use with that computer so that live streaming will be nice and better. But for now, we'll have to deal with this. So, uh, yeah, sorry about that. I mean, this part isn't even that interesting. I'm just taking this off. I don't even know if you guys can hear me right now. Oh, you probably can because I can see it moving. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's out. So, uh, yeah, we got the holders out. So now we're going to actually solder these in. And if you look on the inside, you can't really see too well on camera, but there's, like, these little indications on what way to put it. They're both the same way, so I guess it doesn't matter, but I want to make sure that they're in the right way. And on the board, as you can see, it is clearly marked, which is positive, and then doesn't say anything about negative, but that is positive. So we're going to put it in, like, uh, USB to Ethernet adapter, USB Logitech C200 series. We'll have to get the hot air slash soldering set. Yep. Oh, I have so much things to buy. I am not prepared for anything. Uh, I am the worst at preparing for things. And, um, yeah, but anyway, we're just going to keep this in bits because the bottoms of these should, because the bottoms of these do have, like, these little pins that you're supposed to solder the bore. And um, I hope, and these are pretty close to the uh, original uh, batteries, uh, legs. So I'm hoping that these will fit. Uh, can you send a link to that, uh, solder? Can you send a link to that soldering set? Uh, will do. Uh, that'll be useful. And then after that, I can buy a webcam. I mean, my birthday's coming up soon. So maybe I can just ask for all this on my birthday. I'll have to buy it myself, which would be epic. So I'm hoping that'll be the case for this thing. And, uh, oh man. Ah, oh, the legs are slightly short. They're, they're just, Ah, oh, damn it. 
they're just so close, but they're also so far. Maybe I can, like, I don't know, bend it too much. I'm trying to bend them just a slight bit so that they'll fit. I bent it a bit too much. Uh, Greg is gone. Uh, I can tell. Uh, we have, oh, we have five watching. Nice. Well, Greg is gone for good. Uh, we have uh, Steve here. We got Applebee here. Uh, that's about it, though. So, I think what I'm going to try doing is I'm going to, I don't even know if this is going to work. I might have to make these legs longer and just awkwardly, like, squeeze it in. Uh, but do I want to do that, though? No, I feel like a paper clip in every day. Hmm, what do I do? My iron sucks, so a cheap, sweet will be nice. Okay. Um, what do I do? Uh, I just bring it. Oh, yeah. I think I'm just gonna do it, hopefully. Uh, this, I'm gonna try bending the uh, legs. So I have this small little, uh, small pair of pliers over here. That I'm going to use. I'm going to just gently bend the pins so that they uh, match the holes of the uh, of the uh, uh, of the battery. You just match the battery holes. Uh, that's why I did my external solution because the battery holes didn't exactly fit, and I didn't want to risk damaging the board. Ah, I regret my life decision. Uh, but oh, once again, I'm going to. Mm, Wow, this is this is a, turned out to be a mess. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Now, uh, Duke's complaining about people's uh, grammar. Lovely. Uh, oh, there we go. It fits. Nice. Well, almost. Ah, uh, yeah, good enough. Just bend it a tiny bit more, and then it should be good. Hoping this will work. Really hoping that it will. And if it doesn't, then I'll have to do another stream next Wednesday or something, or maybe this weekend. Uh, uh, parts will probably never arrive that fast based on my luck, so. Uh, yeah, that's perfect. Alrighty, now we are going to actually solder it on. Um, God, the cables. Um, yeah, I wish this was better, but uh, it isn't. All right, so uh, we're actually gonna do this now. This was a mistake. I should have cleared the holes, but now I have to melt it in. My fingers like literally a centimeter away from the uh, iron is scaring me. Does this even fit in the hole? It's like weird and squarish. Oh, man, this is a disaster. This whole stream is a disaster. I mean, I'm... Ah. I mean, this would be a lot easier if I was doing this on my own time. Rather than on a... On a stream. Uh, everybody's just marveling at my awfulness, I guess. Um, All right, that should be a good enough hole. Ugh, I just want this to end. I want to play Tetris. Ugh. My goodness, how hard can it be? That's what I said this morning. Well, the answer is hard. Okay, I know what the problem is. This is like, if you look at the lead, it's like weird. It's like thick, so I'm going to try... Uh, making it uh, smaller by squeezing it. That doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this isn't going to work. Uh, I guess I'll just try. How long is the stream been going for? Is, and it, someone let me know how long this has been going for. I feel like I've been here for like an, at least an hour, I'd assume. Turns out to be 20 minutes, imagine.
my god, this is a mistake. Ah! Oh. I mean, it fits, it's just... Oh, there's like solder and solder in the way. How do I get that out though? I mean, this—I guess I'll just. You could add a. Could you add a wire to the end? Yeah, I'm thinking about doing that, but I want it to be like flush with the board. So I'm gonna try that option first. But I'm pretty convinced that I'm gonna have to do uh, what Duke said, which is just add a wire on. So. Uh, uh, it's been about an hour. Yep, that's what I thought. Uh. Yeah, what, how long did the stream start? Uh, 55 minutes. Yep, yeah, been about an hour. OCD is kicking in. Indeed. Uh, you all know me. I hate when things are not perfect. Oh, man, I'm going to be here for a while. I'm getting hungry. I mean, I had dinner and everything. I wonder when Jay gets back. I've been having a long dinner. Uh, who wants to bet he didn't go to dinner and he just left? He probably left. He got to get bored. Yeah, anyway. It's annoying that there's this chip here and I don't want to melt it. My ADD is kicking in about 30 minutes. Sorry, Charlie. Oh, man. Uh, yeah, that's exactly why I don't go, why I didn't go to the battery bracket route. Sure, it does look stock, but it's easier to replace the batteries and less risky. I mean, you're right, Steve. You know, I think at this point, I'm, I don't even care. I'm just going to, like, make it the stupidest looking thing ever. I'm going to see if I can, like, find a paper clip or something to use for, like, wires. It's going to be the most janky looking thing you've ever seen, but it's going to work. Uh, I swear it's going to work, and then it's going to be epic, so I'm going to find a paper clip real quick. Uh, oh, found one. Uh, all right. Ugh. All right. We have our sacrifice, everybody. Uh, this is a piece of paper clip I found on the floor. Um, just how janky did you think it could get? Um, this is this just the beginning. Um, let me get the... Uh, Cutters. Uh, yeah, hold on. Let me just, uh, yeah, okay. I'm not sure if this is paper clip or if this is solder. I'm hoping it's paper clip, but, uh, you know, I'm just gonna make like four small little strips that aren't too tall. And then I'm gonna solder these onto the bottoms of the, uh, where the leads are for the, uh, the battery holders. Now I'm going to solder that <laughs> into the board. And now I have everybody in, this, in the chat saying, now it's, uh, Mom, I'm scared. Yes, I am scared. Help. Um, this is a bad idea. I mean, it's not a bad idea. It's just a stupid idea. And when was the last time I didn't do something stupid? That was never. So we're just going to do this. So, oh, man, I'm hoping that this isn't. Is this solder? Oh, shoot, it is solder. I'm an idiot. I, I thought solder was a paper clip. And it just melted in my iron. This is useless. Um, do you have any spare Ethernet cables? Rip open one and use some of the eight cables instead of a paper clip. Yeah, uh, I want to, but I kind of I don't have any spare Ethernet cables. Uh, I have some wires somewhere that I think I could use. I mean, a paper clip seems like the most appropriate thing. Um, since it's, it's like a kind of, since it's sort of like the same material, and I've seen people use paper clips for a lot of things before, but uh, yeah, hold on one moment. Let's see if I can. You want me to go around here? Ah. 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 Um. Stay. I'm gonna say. Uh, mm. 
I should get a live. Uh, I would highly advise using something other than a paper clip. Good luck. Um, uh, oops. Uh, it's difficult. Living is hard. Living is pain. Um, what? Now I'm just getting distracted. Damn it. I can't play. You know what? I'm just going to find a table. I know where a table is. Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't know. No, that's like weird. Oh! Oh, no. Oh, I know what I can do. Alright, I have found the carnage of an old Chromebook. Uh, what I shall do with this is I shall find... Uh, I will find a piece of metal somewhere in this that I can use for my monstrosity that I plan on composing. Uh, I'm hoping there's some wires in here that I can just rip out. Um, yeah, there seem to be some. Now there's this uh, Wi-Fi antenna that I'll try using, maybe. Ah, uh, God, this is a mess. I'm stupid. This is everything is a mistake. No, this is too small. Hold on. Um, yeah, you know what, I'm going to, you know, I'm going to find the paper clip. I'll be back in a moment. Sorry about that. I have found my solution. This probably won't work, but I'm going to do it anyway. Uh, I found this piece of metal. I don't know what it is, but it's not solder. I'm pretty sure this came from like a space bar or something. It's very thin. Uh, I think it fits in the hole. It should fit in the hole. I'm hoping it fits in the hole. So I am going to use that. And if it's too thick, which it might be, then I'm going to use, uh, I'm just going to cut off the metal part of this. Help me, God. Uh, it is totally fine to pause or resume another day. You, you won't want to rush and end up killing your Mac. Trust me, he looks at dead quadruple. Uh, I'm so sorry I'm late. Uh, thank you for coming. I uh, want to talk about Jack. Uh, not on stream. Uh, maybe later. And my phone's about to die, so I'll turn this off. Kill me. Help me, God. Um, yeah, I don't know if I want to stop now, because then that'd be a disappointment of all humanity. I'll go on for, like, another 15 minutes, and if I don't get anywhere, I'll probably just stop, and then we'll just do, like, a Q&A or whatever. And I want to get something out of this stream, at least. I mean, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to sacrifice this piece of metal I used to use for opening up, uh, floppy drives that eject mechanism now this is too quick ah oh, okay you know what i'm stopping i can't do this this is stupid i should have been more prepared but i wasn't my life is a mistake i can't no this isn't gonna work uh what i'm going to do oh I'm, I, I keep getting stupid ideas and they keep getting stupider and stupider no i not 
what could I use? I mean, I don't think I'll, I don't think I want to continue this to be honest. I mean, we could just talk about stuff, I guess, but then that'd just be boring. So, uh, I'm so sorry. I'm late. You are getting some knowledge and experience. Don't be hard on yourself. Do a Q and A. Yeah. You know, what? let's just end this here. I don't think this is going to work. I'm going to unplug the soldering iron. I'm going to get materials and I'm actually going to do this right next time. Uh, yeah, this was a huge colossal fail. So, uh, yeah, we're just going to end this now. That's going to get better soon. I think my camera died. Uh, yeah, whatever. I don't even think I got that, but. Yeah, I agree with Mac84. Uh, what's your favorite Power PC Mac? Oh, that's a good question. So I guess we're doing a Q&A now. Uh, so I can just uh, readjust this camera now. Do it like that. Uh, yeah, so one of my favorite Power PC Macs, that really depends, actually. I mean, I've encountered a lot. I mean, the ones I encounter the most are, like, the, uh, uh, the later-ish ones, like the G3, like G3s and over. I don't have any... I don't really have any Power PC Macs that are uh, uh, older than a G3 iMac. I used to have a couple, but then I think I sold them or something. Uh, yeah, at the moment, I might say the iMac G3. But, uh, yeah, I have to say that because, I mean, it's the only one I have. But, I mean, in general, if it was, like, something I didn't have, I'd probably say, like, a... Uh, uh, like a Quadra of some kind, or maybe like a, a late 90s-ish Mac. I don't know, but if you're talking about like newer, then maybe like a, a G4 of some kind, or maybe, I don't know. It depends. I mean, I like a lot of Macs. I would say maybe the uh, G3 is one of my favorites. Uh, what was my first experience with a Mac? Oh, that's a good question. Uh, one of my first ones, uh, let me actually gr go grab it quickly. Uh -huh. I mean, I don't know if this is considered a Mac, but this is one of my first ever Apple computers. This is an iBook G3 Snow, possibly the boringest iBook I own. Just in general, it's just white. It does stuff, and it it looks like this, but this was like one of the first, I mean, one of the first um, experience with a Mac was obviously my mom's computer. But, like, the first actual, like, raw experience I've had with, like, actually using a Mac that was mine was the, uh, was this, uh, iBook G3. I actually had a teacher who gave this to me, and I thought it was, like, the coolest thing. I used to watch, like, uh, DVDs and stuff on I used to have, It has a good battery that lasts, like, maybe 30 minutes, and it's pretty cool. I had a clamshell, and it was... A wanted snow model because it had two USB ports. What? Interesting. Um, I'm not sure it's the... Oh, it is the two USB port model, apparently. Interesting. Uh, yeah, if you look on the side, this one's actually a two-port one. If you look at that. And this is, I believe, a, uh, a 2003 of some kind. I don't know the specs of it. I haven't turned this thing on in kind of a while. Um doesn't say anywhere but this is pretty old i mean i've had this for a while now maybe like since 2015 or so and then this was like really when it started so uh, my first mac was a 2009 white mac white polycarbonate macbook yeah those things are pretty cool uh yeah the keyboard gets smelly they smell like feet all post clamshell models have two usb ports cool yeah that's what i thought um this keyboard smells a lot like yeah, it smells like dust. It has a very distinct smell to it. Uh, kind of nostalgic smell, because I remember when I bought it, the keyboard smelled really weird. And I don't I don't know if I liked it or if I didn't like it. It was just like a smell. And I thought it was it smelled funny or something. I don't know. But it was just, just like a sort of nostalgic-ish smell. I kind of like it, so it's kind of nice. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, model number inspector under the keyboard. Uh, right label under it. Yeah, let's take a look at that. Um, yeah, so if you look at the 
model number, he seems to be a, a 900 megahertz, 128 megabytes of RAM, 40 gigabyte hard drive, I mean, and a combo drive. Um, not sure what the combo means. I think it's like the DVD drive or something, but if I come a bit closer, you guys can take a look for yourselves. Uh, yeah, so it's right in here, uh, up here at this little sticker. It's also got an Ethernet ID. I don't even care if this information is leaked. It's probably useless and obsolete, but uh, can't really see it actually, but I gave it to you so you can have it or whatever. A combo CD, CD rewrite burner and DVD reader, cool. So this is top of the line model, I assume, because I'm pretty sure I've watched a couple of older uh, Apple keynotes, and they and Steve mentioned that uh, they usually uh, come in like diff they they came in like different uh, what is it? They came in uh, different uh, drive types. There was just the regular CD, the CD rewrite. I think there was also a DVD burner, but that one's also pretty uh, that one's pretty advanced, and I'm not sure if it was on this model yet or if it was just an expensive option, but. Uh, this one's the read write and it has the translucent keyboard, which is the norm for these ones. Uh, even not ID is only local. Don't worry about that. Yeah, this is a European computer, so that'd be completely useless and irrelevant to me. But um, yeah, that's about it with this thing. It doesn't turn on because the battery's like long dead, but that's all that. That's all that thing's about. Uh, we have a bit more time. I'd say we could maybe have like 15 or so more minutes. Uh, what are what other 68k max you have oh that's a good question actually uh i have quite a few actually um i have a lot of 68k max and accessories i used to have a bit more but i i've been thinning up my collection a bit to make room for more interesting things because my parents don't want me to like hoard um all this stuff but i mean it's not exactly hoarding if it's organized which to some people is just hoarding with extra steps. But uh, I'll, I can show a few uh, quickly. Um, so we'll just take this away quickly. Uh, one of them that I have right now that I'm working on is this Macintosh LC, which is right behind me. And this thing I got, it was boxed and it was uh, broken, but it was a very good deal. It was like, I don't know, like $15 boxed on eBay. Uh, this is the original LC. And uh, it's the single drive one, but you can actually turn into a dual drive or dual drive with a hard drive, which is pretty advanced, but never was actually never an original option. But uh, anything you want to get rid of, well, you know where to send it. <laughs> yep. I mean, I, I just, I've sold stuff on eBay before. Uh, I can see um, if there's maybe something I can part with, maybe send you, Steve, <laughs> if you really want it, but. Uh, this is definitely not one of them, but if I were to get rid of it, I'd probably just give it away, get rid of it with like the box and everything. But at the moment I'm still working on this, I had a uh, power supply issue, but I was able to recap it and now it works. Um, but uh, I'm still working on the full restoration video of that too. I have kind of a few things I'm working on right now. And this also needs a board recap, and I'm kind of dreading it after watching Steve's recap. I mean, I already have the capacitors ordered. This was like a kit that I bought, and the caps already come uh, pre-organized. So I'm dreading it, as I said before, but I'm hoping it won't be too difficult. But uh, the LC is a great Mac, the first entry-level Macs that allow you um, allows an external screen. Yeah, uh, I can actually power it on right now since it's quite convenient to use. Uh, if I have an extra power cable somewhere, uh, yeah, I do on the floor. Um, I'm just hope this is not hot anymore. No, it's still hot, but it should be too hot. Um, but yeah, this thing does work. The only problem is that the sound doesn't work, which is because of the uh, capacitor leakage on the board. So, and that, as I said before, I'm still trying to fix that. So, that should be coming out soon. But uh, it does work. You turn it on, and it will eventually just play on the LCD display, hard drive works, floppy works, uh, everything works but the sound, and it just needs uh, new caps. Uh, 15 caps on that one, wait until you have the right tools and you'll do it just fine. Yeah, that's what I thought. And yeah, so I don't have the right tools, so I'll have to wait with that. But anyway, there's the uh, thing. It's booting up right now. Uh, would have would have been cool to upgrade any power pack PC to Mac. 
it would be cool to upgrade any PowerPC Mac to modern specs, honestly. Yeah, that would be cool. I'm actually trying to plan a uh, Hackintosh build for an older uh, iMac G3. Because um, I want to buy a tray-loading iMac G3 and turn it into a Hackintosh and put, like, newer components on it and, like, put uh, a new version of, hack, like, a new version of Mac OS on it or something cool like that. Uh, but I want to keep as much original parts. I even want to, I even want to go to as far as uh, keeping the original CRT screen, uh, despite how uh, low resolution they are and bad they are to modern standards, because I want it to be as original as possible. And LCDs and uh, CRT cases are stupid in my opinion. But anyway, this is the LC. I'll boot it up. Um, not too interesting. I don't have much on here anyway, so. Uh, there's not too much to see here, honestly, but it works, and it boots up, and not too much to show you about it. I believe that we can go into the, uh, uh, using the CRT is a royal pain. Well, on the slot loaders it is, but on the tray loaders, they have a DB15 connector, and someone told me you need to use, like, a special, you have to make, like, a power board or something so that the computer can start up the CRT or whatever, so... I have to see how I'm going to do that. It might not even be possible. Uh, Charlie's LCD on CRT housing OCD intensifies. Yes. There is a circuitry involved that requires some tricky work to trick in order to get the CRT to think it's an iMac with the proper voltage. Yeah, that's what I was actually saying. So um, I want to try getting to that eventually, but uh, it's going to be difficult as I have too much experience with doing stuff like that. Uh, yes, without the iMac board, you'll need an extra work is what I'm trying to get at. Yeah. Or, this is a stupid idea that probably won't work. I could just keep the original iMac board in there but and use it to just power on the uh, regular computer, but then have the regular computer plugged in. I mean, that could be an option. I'm kind of scared to take apart the CRT computers because they are very high voltage. And, uh, yeah, that is something to be scared of. Of, but for me, I'm not scared because I've done it a lot of times, and also the trick is to just not touch any of the high voltage components. And I usually never um, take apart any of my CRT Max uh, past the uh, main board and stuff because I never have a reason to, because none of them have failed yet. So, but uh, or none of my CRT monitors have either. Anyway, moving on, uh, I can show a couple more 68K Max if you guys please. Uh, one Mac that I have. This one's a personal favorite, and this one I've had for kind of some time. Is this Mac beautiful, lovely Macintosh LC? Uh, this I got last year, or maybe like three years ago, at the uh, Vintage Computer Festival. As long as you discharge it correctly, it's fine. Bruce's channel's got the great tutorial about it. Yep, pretty cool, and tutorial video on his channel. Yeah, Bruce has a lot of very good content on his channel about how to discharge stuff. If you want to discharge a CRT, I recommend checking it out. I already know how to discharge a CRT. I just never have the reason to do it. You just have to get a flat tip, connect it to ground, and then put it under the suction cup, and then it should be discharged. But usually they discharge themselves, but it's better, better rather safe than dead. But uh, anyway, moving on to the SC. This I got at a VCF um, like two years ago. Um, I was exhibiting actually for one of the days, and um, and uh, my SC broke in the middle of the uh, in, of the show, and it was very disappointing because it was I was like in the middle of doing something, and then the whole thing just stopped working. I think the system disk just stopped booting. I mean, it was a pretty bad computer. I actually sold it recently because I was just done with it for now. So. I have this one now because so, some guy felt bad for me, so he just gave me this SE that he had lying around at his booth. Or I think he bought it at the consignment booth. I'm not sure, but he was a very nice guy and very happy that I got this. So, And this is the uh, SuperDrive model. It has the built-in uh, drive. This looks like a might be an older one that was upgraded because it doesn't have the SuperDrive badge. This one doesn't have a floppy drive at the moment. Had one when I got it, but the drive stopped working because of the eject mechanism. And I don't feel like fixing it because the gears are like $8 a piece. So I want to see if I can either reproduce my own or just eventually uh, just buy the gears. But yeah, that's also a really nice system. Uh, I can show like maybe one more and then maybe we could do something else. Or I could just stop the stream, but... Uh, you guys can choose. 
Um, but what have I missed? Does the Mac 2 work? No, I actually gave up on it because I couldn't get the battery holder to fit. So Steve suggested we just did a QA and a instead. So uh, the Mac 2 project has failed. So I will have uh, another attempt of it uh, very soon. So, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, um, uh, we, I can see, I'm going to see if I can try finding something else I can show you guys, and then I think I might end the stream in a moment. Uh, what's something I can show? Oh, I have an idea. Uh, let me get it. Uh, I've got to run. See you tomorrow. It didn't fail. Just, just postponed. All right, Steve. I'll see you later. Uh, I'm going to show one more Mac, and then we'll be finished with the stream for tonight. So the final Mac that I was showing you is actually sneak peek to my one of my other repair videos. This is a PowerBook Duo. This computer is very special and interesting, and I bought it. This is a, something I've been wanting for a very long time for a couple of reasons. So uh, I got this pretty recently. Uh, I bought it recently as well, and it didn't work when I got it, but I was able to fix it and have a hard drive issue. And this is actually going to be part of a video soon. I don't think it's going to be a repair video since it's just too short, but uh, it eventually is going to be pretty cool. Uh, my favorite Apple product overall is the Xserve. Yeah, and the Xserves are pretty cool, but for me, they're kind of expensive. I want to see how I can get one at some point, but I probably won't. Uh, we can give you tips tomorrow, Charlie. Oh, that's lovely. I can't wait. And uh, nice. A duo. Now... Now you got my attention. Oh, God, Steve. Uh, just when you thought he was about to leave, I pull out the duo, and he's like, nope, I'm back. Anyway, this is the duo. It was broken when I got it. Uh, I had a hard drive issue. Um, the way I fixed it was by whacking it. Uh, someone on Reddit uh, gave me that suggestion, and I whacked it, and it worked. And now it works every time, which is pretty nice. And it also came with the signature dock, and it also came with some manuals, which is probably everyone's favorite thing in the whole world. Um, I got a lot of manuals on this product. Uh, yeah, it came with a lot of manuals. Uh, Ken still recycled his. Yeah, Ken. He kind of messed up there. He, he recycled a lot of stuff. Uh, anyway, uh, so some of the manuals I got, I got the packing list, which is boring. I got the warranty, which is boring i got the remote access client which is i mean what is this even it's probably boring uh yeah this is just apple talk stuff boring and then it also yeah ken's kind of dumb unfortunately well, i mean he's not dumb it's just that was a dumb mistake so send the boring stuff here <laughs> well i might actually i mean if you really want the uh packing list and warranty for a for uh, an expired duo duo dock or something, uh, maybe I'll send it to you. Uh, yeah, and you can enjoy framing it or something on your wall. But the one thing I'm not gonna give you is this thing, the duo dock user's guide. And this is actually probably the best user's guide I've ever actually used because um, not only does it show you how to turn on and plug in things on the computer, as you can see here, but it also has teardown instructions, which is actually very useful. I don't have to go on the internet and do it. And this actually shows you how to upgrade the Duo Dock, which I love because this is just super easy and convenient rather than just going on Google and just looking at tedious instructions. It even tells you how to like properly open parts up like this up. It's excellent. I just love this. And if you're a, a Mac collector and you have like a complicated Mac, stuff like this is just super useful. It tells you like where the screws are. It tells you how to do it. It's just lovely. I love this. This is Excellent. All computers like new computers like this should just have stuff like this. It's just lovely. I love it. Um, uh, media mail shopping is cheap, and I'll send you some buttons. Oh, uh, maybe I'll trade you uh, some stuff. I'll see. Uh, those old user guides are fantastic. Yeah, agree. Uh, when Apple manuals were actually good. Yep. Nowadays they just tell you how to turn on your iPhone or some dumb crap. Uh, I wish I had that 20 years ago. I had no idea how to take my Duo Dock apart. Do you still have a Duo Dock? Uh, that'd be an interesting uh, thing to talk about for a moment. Uh, we could talk about it some more tomorrow at Mac Yak if you guys want. Uh, back when Apple let you take apart the computers. Exactly. It's excellent. Um, I mean, it does also have some of the stupid stuff like where to plug in the monitor or where to plug in the keyboard. But it's got its fair share of stupid stuff, but also it's very useful stuff. 
Um, but yeah, very, very nice. It also points out where to uh, do other stuff. So that's pretty neat. But anyway, I'm going to see if I can find like one more thing to show you guys. Uh, uh, kind of running out of ideas. But uh, what could I show? Uh, hmm. Kind of thinking about it. Uh, hmm. maybe I can just, mm, uh, I think I'll just, yeah, I, I, have, I have an idea. Uh, I have one more Mac I want to show you guys. Uh, this one I've already done the videos on, and you've probably already seen before, but I have a bit to talk about it. Uh, what will keep Steve here? I don't know if this will, I mean, Steve does have this, but it is interesting. Ah, uh, this is, uh, the Macintosh Color Classic. And this is one of the other things that, uh, that, uh, oh yeah, now he's, now he's interested, I see. Or maybe he's laughing because he already has one. I mean, he has one, I mean, whatever, but this is the Macintosh Color Classic. This is another 68K Mac. This is one of the first, uh, all-in-one Macs to include color. What if it was the first ever Mac to have color, but I'm pretty sure that might have been the LC. So, I'm sorry, Color Classic, you kind of lost in that battle, but... Uh, it is a pretty nice computer. This is another thing that I've been wanting on my wish list. And stop pulling my, my heartstrings, damn it. I'm sorry, Steve. I can't help it. Uh, do you have a semi-new Macs like the Mac Pro, 5.1 Mac Pro? I don't have any semi-new Macs. The newest Mac that I have is a 2008 MacBook. And it's the aluminum MacBook, not the Pro, but the regular one. Uh, I have it somewhere, but I don't know where it is. So I might pull that out in another stream if you guys want. Uh, is... It is, it is the first ever compact Mac with color, and the Mac 2 is the first ever color-capable model. Okay, that makes sense. So, yeah, that's pretty nice to know. Uh, I already knew that this was the first color compact Mac, but, yeah, this is, again, as I was saying, this was the first, uh, first compact Mac with color, as Steve said, and this is also another X, and um, this is... It's been on my wish list for a while. I mean, like, everybody. And I bought mine broken, like I always do, because broken things are always cheaper. And they always have easy fix. Um, and I forgot about that MacBook. Yeah, that MacBook is somewhere. I don't know where it is. I think it's in my room or something. But uh, it's kind of forgotten at this point. But, yeah. Uh, the Color Classic. I mean, this, had a, this also needs a recap, I think. Uh, I was able to fix it. The completely dead thing by uh, scrubbing the board with uh, vinegar and alcohol and stuff. So, uh, yeah, it worked. And uh, there's not too much to say about it. I mean, other than it's a neat little thing, nice for games and stuff. But uh, otherwise, not too much to say about it. But, uh, all right, I think I'm actually going to end the stream for tonight. Uh, I, I thank, you, thank you all for uh, tuning in. I really enjoyed this uh, live stream. And uh, thank you for all the celebrities that decided to join in. We had uh, we had Jay, we had Greg, we had Steve. Uh, I guess Duke is a celebrity if you want to count uh, count a count a guy's video of a cat pooping or something. I don't know, but uh, anyway, uh, you guys have a great night. You too, Rabbit Guy. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this stream. And I'm sorry it's kind of a disaster. Nothing really happened, but uh, it was still pretty fun at the end. So I hope to see you all tomorrow at uh, Mac Yak. Uh, go check that out. It'll be in episode 55 happening tomorrow at 8. I uh, can't wait to be a part of that. So, uh, yeah. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, comment, like, and subscribe. Or do whatever you want. And I will see you all in the next stream, video, or whatever. And, or at MacTech tomorrow. So, yeah. See you all later. And uh, thanks for watching. And goodbye.